Yellowstone. How scientists are determining the next eruption after magma, rapidly. Yellowstone volcano scientists have determined which part of the park is most likely to erupt next after identifying magma that is rising to the surface faster than other parts of the system. The Yellowstone caldera has been dubbed a supervolcano because of its potential to cause global devastation if it were to super erupt again in the future. This has happened three times in history 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago and 640,000 years ago, raising fears that another major eruption could happen again due to the average time between previous eruptions. The U.S. Geological Survey USGS, says the claims are unfounded but is monitoring seismographs around Yellowstone National Park for signs of anything unusual. However, thanks to research led by Guillaume Girard, a visiting professor at Michigan State University, scientists may be able to determine where the next eruption is likely to occur. In a paper published in 2012, Geologists speculated that Yellowstone's next major eruption would likely be centered on one of three parallel fault zones that run north-northwest across the park. Two of these areas produced large lava flows when the volcano was last active, about 174,000 to 70,000 years ago, while a third has experienced its most frequent tremors in recent years. By studying the titanium content of these lava flows, Dr. Girard's team determined that their source was emerging very rapidly from a magma chamber about 4 to 7 miles below the surface. The amount of titanium in a lava flow provides an indication of the depth at which crystals form, so if the magma had stopped during its ascent, its content would have varied from the center to the outer edges. However, Dr. Girard's team found no such features, which would suggest that the magma was rising rapidly to the surface geologically, which it likely has been doing for thousands of years. Dr. Dr. Girard told National Geographic, it's not an imminent danger. Every study has concluded that there is no magma ready to erupt in the near future. Dr. Girard said smaller eruptions were more likely and the chance of one occurring in a given year was about 1 in 10,000. 0.010%. He described the eruptions as lava flows, which are not explosive, adding. They are very, very high in vitality and they are flowing very, very slowly. He added. Some of these lava flows are traveling 20 miles. We have never seen a rhyolite eruption of this magnitude in human history. Dr. Ben Ellis, a volcanologist at the Institute of Geochemistry and Petrology in Zurich, Switzerland, said he found Dr. Girard's research very neat, but added that eruption patterns could change unexpectedly. He pointed to a series of old eruptions that initially occurred along a series of linear zones like those found in Dr. Ellis's study. Girard, but then, shifted abruptly to a new location outside the linear zone. The USGS has previously played down claims that the volcano was overdue. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientist Jacob Lowenstern said in 2014, when you see people claiming it's overdue, usually the numbers they throw out say the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, but in fact this volcano erupts every 600,000 years. But, in reality, if you average out the eruption intervals, it's 2.1 million to 1.3 million years and then 640,000 years ago. If you average out those numbers, you get a result that's over 700,000 years. So, in reality, even if you try to make this argument, it's not going to happen for another 70,000 years.
But Dr. Lowenstern acknowledged that things could change geologically within Yellowstone National Park at any time. He added, The other thing that's important to realize is that when they make statistics based on two eruption intervals, they're just playing around, because we don't know. There's no clock there, the magma will erupt when it wants to erupt. There's a lot going on.